So welcome back. You know, Rick Locastro, who's District 1 County Commissioner that encompasses a whole bunch of areas, um, which I'm sure you've seen on previous shows, is here really. Let's talk, Rich, about what's happening with our beaches after the storm in Naples, on Marco Island. Tell us some about that. Well, it's great to get the beaches reopened, but the beaches took a lot of damage. And yeah. so even though folks are out there now enjoying things, we lost a lot of sand. There were some areas up and down Naples and even around our area here near Marco that had berms that protected um, residences on the other side mm -hmm. from water and all these yeah. other things. A lot of those got washed away. A lot of that sand is now out in the Gulf where it was pushed beyond the houses. And so... Uh, now with a lot of things cleaned up, we have to replace that sand, we have to replace the berms. We have the Army Corps of Engineers continuing a, a in-depth study that they've been working on for about two years, but after Hurricane Ian, it really kicked the study into overdrive and focused on, is focused now even more closely on areas that sustained damage during Hurricane Ian. Uh -huh. um, we're gonna be investing maybe up to about $30 million of wow. money into beach restoration and rebuilding berms that were destroyed. We're applying for grant money through FEMA and several other yeah. different avenues, but more usually when you apply for grant money, you actually have to um, front the money first and then get reimbursed. Stinks. But the, <laughs> yeah, but the county has that investment. And I tell you, it is an investment because if we don't make those kind of repairs and another Ian comes right behind us and the beaches aren't restored back to where they were or better, um, we could take another huge hit. And yeah. 30 million today could be 75 million tomorrow. Even the cost of sand has, has grown ex, um, exponentially. So there's a lot of big projects when it comes to the beaches and getting them back to where they were. And in some areas, even better where, than where they were because we learned during Ian berms in certain areas weren't high enough and berms are basically a big pile of sand yeah. um, but it does a whole bunch of things and sometimes there's vegetation put on those berms and it helps provide a barrier and in some cases that barrier is the only thing that protected um, some residential areas or the beach itself and so we're very focused on that restoration now and that's all over Collier County a lot of that investment will be in District 1 but it'll be all over Collier County you know, I'd like to carry that a little bit further because um, when we were previously talking, you were talking about um, Tiger Tail Lagoon and what's happening in Hideaway Beach and how those really work together to the benefit of our beach and our lagoon. Right. So Hideaway Beach, you know, here on Marco Island, so, you know, in a big part of, of District 1, um, Every so many years, they do a, they do their own beach restoration. And Hideaway mm -hmm. Beach is a little bit different in that they tax their citizens. They they self fund a lot of the things that they do, so it's not taxpayer dollars. But water doesn't know where the district boundaries are. So <laughs> whatever Hideaway Beach does. Um, helps a whole bunch of other places that aren't Hideaway Beach. Right. So I fully support the uh, project going on on Hideaway Beach right now. And it's, it's, it's one of many projects they've done over the years to restore sand that has that has been displaced during sure. Hurricane Ian. Um, there's been areas that um, are much more shallow because um, some of that displaced sand has gone into areas where the them being more shallow has impeded the water flow. People that have lived here a long time, did you go, when, when you went out to um, Tiger Tail Lagoon many, many years ago, what did it look like? And what does yeah. it look like now? A lot of people tell me, you know, it's the Tiger Tail mud puddle. And it's not because of something that, you know, the county did wrong, but when you don't have the water flow that comes north of Tiger Tail, which is in that hideaway area, right. you don't have it come as rapidly or with as, with as much tide. quantity, right. um, then you don't get that flush. Yeah. Uh, what Hideaway Beach is doing right now is opening up the the um, the mouth of where that water so comes cool. through and making it deeper and it'll do a, a lot of great things for Hideaway Beach. They're going to restore their beach and and, and right. everything. But then once you get past Hideaway Beach, which the water will do, sure. now it comes into an area, area that's controlled by the county and enjoyed by many more people. Um, and the improvements they're making will make exponential improvements to Tiger Tail Lagoon and even further downstream. So the project's going on now um they've also applied for some uh, tourist development uh dollars uh to f so that they can finish the project yeah. because the price of it has gone up a little bit and that's met with a lot of approval because these projects need to be done right if you do them sort of 75 percent and then we get another hurricane ian um you know you can't skimp on these things no. and so uh you know i'm a i'm a big supporter of making sure that you know we measure twice cut once and then fully fund, especially if it's something that is so um, critical as our beach restoration and our water quality. 
It's one of the reasons why I know you, if you live here, why you bought. If you're looking to come down is our beaches. They are the most naturally beautiful place in the entire world, in my opinion. And we'd love to have you enjoy them. So if you're looking for a great place to buy or sell, if you're looking to give a voice to our District 1 uh, commissioner or any of the commissioners, you got to give us a talk too. So until next time, I'm Mary Bartis with the Bartos Group of Premier Plus. Mm-hmm.